In this session, we're going to take a look at the CorelDRAW X6 upgrade. We're going to do an overview of some of the new tools and some of the new functionality and also some of this performance boosts that we're going to see in X6. X6 really is, in our opinion, one of the most significant updates to CorelDRAW in the last decade or so. The reason being is because we've got tremendous updates in speed and we're able to work with complex media assets that, quite frankly, we really couldn't work with back in X5 and X4, or at least not as effectively as we can work with them in X6. We've also got some incredibly powerful new tools, such as the new vector tools. We've got the smear, attract, repel, and twirl tool. We've got new color styles. We've got new support for open type fonts and many other things that have been built into this upgrade that make it, in our opinion, a must-have upgrade. Go ahead and start out here just by taking a look at some of the performance boost that we'll see with X6 got a couple of brushes down here that I built out and one of these was built out for X4 and X5 and the other one I built out here for X6 and looking at them here it doesn't look like there's that much of a difference between them but if we zoom in we're going to see a significant difference. This brush that was built out for X4 and X5 is very limited. Actually what we did is we took a red vector flame and we contoured to the inside then we broke that contour apart, changed that to yellow and applied a transparency to it. Because we work in screen printing primarily, we want to be able to create colorful graphics and media assets, but yet have a reduced number of colors. So we relied on the transparency here to help us build a blend from red to yellow with this spectrum of orange that you see here in between the two. We've got a two color design, but yet we've got a lot of pop and shape and highlighting in the graphic. Much better looking than say perhaps this flat graphic down here at the bottom of the screen. Here's the X6 asset, and when we look at that, we'll see that we contoured that to the inside 130 times, and we still have excellent performance here in X6. So we're not going to have any banding. We'd actually use this brush on large format output, whereas the other brush for X4, we probably wouldn't want to use that very big on large format output. Work great for t-shirts, but if we we're printing huge posters, we probably wouldn't want to use that. But here in X6, we can work with media assets like this, where we've got tremendously complex graphics with large amounts of objects, and they render almost instantaneously and we don't have any lag or problems of X6 choking and hanging on the files. We also see a tremendous speed boost. So we're able to work faster with the application because it handles these files more easily. It's faster and it's also more stable than we were back in X5 and X4. Now I've set these up as brushes and we're just going to take a look at this as an example. I'm going to go back to X4 and I've got these brushes set up here. I'm going to go ahead and close this contour docker here and we'll go ahead and select this curve here same graphics I'm going to go to artistic media and I'm going to apply the X4 brush I'll just go ahead and click 1 1000 and that applies almost instantaneously let's take a look at the blue brush in X4 which is our X6 brush go ahead and click on that 1 1000 2 1000 3 1000 so about through two and a half or three seconds Let's go ahead and look at this in X5. We'll go here to our Artistic Media Docker. Same setup, same curve, same brush. Go ahead and select here and we'll apply brush number one. Excuse me, our X4 brush. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. So that's about two seconds in X5. We'll go here with the X6 brush. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand. 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000. It's going to take about 12 or 15 seconds to render this brush in X5. It's going to be something that we really just can't even work with because it's going to render too slow. We're not going to be able to edit it because every time we edit it, we're going to have to wait 10 or 15 seconds for the file to update in X5. I'm going to hit Control Z here because I want to copy those curves. And I'll just go ahead and select these. And I'll hit Control C and we'll go back to X6 and we'll hit Control V. And we're going to go to our artistic media docker. And we're going to apply first off the X4 brush. And we'll go ahead and select that and apply that. Instantaneous. Do the same thing here with the X6 brush. And we'll click on that. 1, 1,000 in about one second. So now here in X6, because of improvements in speed and rendering, which you'll notice throughout the entire application, it's quite snappy compared to X5, X4, and X3. I can work much quicker with far more complex design assets. If I want to start laying down multiple copies 
of this flame asset in a design, I'm going to be able to do that without any issue because it renders so quickly. I could apply 10 or 15 of these where I couldn't even imagine of doing that back in X5. And quite frankly, in X4, you'll start choking on it after you've got about three or four bushes laid out in the application. So the first point for us is the update in speed and performance in X6. We can work with design assets we couldn't work with back in X5, X4, and X3. Also, this has re resulted in greater stability in the application and less crashing because it's not choking on complex objects when we're doing our design work. Here on page two, we want to take a look at the new vector tools. Go ahead and zoom in here. And we've got a complete training series on this on advancedtshirts.com. But what I did was in that training series, I took this skull and I changed the expression on his face. And then I actually went and used the smear tools to recreate these cool form brushes that you see around the skull and around the bones. And then I went and created these flame effects. And we have an entirely new avenue or spectrum of design options available in X6 because of these new tools. And that's smear, twirl, repel, and attract. And we've got the complete training series for this on the site. We'll just take a look at this briefly here. I can actually go into clip art now and some of my design assets and start editing them and tweaking them very quickly and very easily in X6 in ways I never could have even imagined before in Corel Draw. Go up here and click on our shape tool and come down to the smear tool. Got the skull selected. I'm going to reshape this nib a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. I'll hold down shift and just pull my mouse back. I'll come up here to the left eye and I'll pull on that and I'll instantaneously start tweaking and changing my graphic radically. I'll go from what looks like a common looking skull to an angry or more sinister looking skull. And I can bring this down here and tweak the nose shape as you can see here. And you imagine, can you imagine the things you'll be able to do with some of the vector clip art, some of the art libraries you have around in your shop or in your computer working with these tools in X6. You can take a mascot and absolutely change the expression on the mascot's face, make it more muscular and do all kinds of things with Vector that in the past we had to go in with our shaping tool and start moving lines and nodes. Now we're dynamically moving the Vector objects, tweaking them and changing them here in Draw. Another thing we can do is we can actually kind of draw with these tools and use them to create Vector objects. I'll create a very simple Vector circle here, right above his eyebrow, and I'll fill that with a black. Go back to my Smear tool and I'll get the Smooth Smear. I'll reach size this nib, just shift and hold down, and then come over here, make sure I'm set to 100 pressure, start pulling this out, and you can see I start to create a vector object here that could be part of my illustration to offset the eyebrow. So the new vector tools are absolutely incredible. I can't say enough good things about them. I've been waiting for these for years. Go ahead and click on page 3 here and see what we're dealing with here. We've got the new open type fonts. X6 is the first version of CorelDRAW with full support for all the character sets with open type fonts and also a major upgrade in the way in which CorelDRAW handles type characters and fonts. We'll just take a brief look at this here. As I've said earlier in the video, we got a complete training series for all of this on the website www.advancedtshirts.com. I'm going to go over here and click on my text tool. I'll left click and highlight this artistic text. And you'll notice I get a blue box around that. And then if I left click on this arrow, I can interactively get to all of my character sets for this particular font. Very powerful and really this has opened up all kinds of ability to understand what you're working with in fonts and what you're dealing with. The things that you have no idea about when you're working with a keyboard, you now see your options for these fonts here through this new activity, this new tool, interactivity in X6. And I can come down here and take a look at stylistic set 3 and you can see the Y change. Go back to historical ligatures, etc. and get dynamic updating directly in CorelDRAW with the new support for open type fonts. Another big breakthrough in X6. Take a look at page 4 here. Click off here and click on page 4. Here we've got color styles, another huge update. I'm going to go ahead and click on my color styles docker here. I'll take my skull graphic. I'm going to go ahead and delete this here. Not going to need that harmony. Got the introduction of harmonies. Go ahead and lasso and select my skull graphic here. Just left click, hold that, drag that right into harmonies. Now we can't get into everything in these new updates here, but we'll take a brief look at them. Go ahead and bring my groups down and select OK. I'm going to select this and change the color to a different gray here in the background. 
Now, I don't have anything selected, but these objects have now all been linked to this color style or this color harmony. And we can see with our flame effects here, we've got red and yellow. But I've got three blacks in here, and I want to bring that down to one black. So hold down Shift and select all those, and I'll come down here and select Merge Colors. Now I've got a four color design with black, yellow, red, and blue. The next thing I'll do is just come down here and look at my black. I can change my black down here with the slider. And it'll become more of a gray as you can see there. If I want to look at different color scenarios for my flames, I can just come in here, click on my group, left click here, start pulling one of these circles, and I can see what my colors are going to look like with completely different color scenarios and move them all at the same time, creating and editing and looking at different harmonies. I can also click on one color. Let's say I want to see what this looked like as a yellow and green flame. And I just change that to a yellow, click on here, left click on this circle and bring this into the green. Now there's a lot of dynamic new functionality available in this color styles docker. We don't have time to get into it all here, but we've got training on it on advanced t-shirts.com and you won't want to miss this. This is a massive update relating to colors. Go ahead and take a look at page five here. And here we've got our new object styles in CorelDRAW X6, a major update to working with styles. And what are styles? Well, let's go to Tools, and we can click on Object Styles. I've already got this open as a Docker. I'll come down here and click on this, and I'll go to Object Styles. I've got a page of a catalog here, and this could be one page, 50 pages, or 100 pages. And as you can see, I've got some things set up in here. I've got some T-shirts, and I've got a little footer beneath each T-shirt with a color and a track number 14, track number 13. So the coaches can call and see, well, we like design number 13. Well, let's say that I built out this catalog with styles and I wanted to change the colors of it based on the schools I was sending it to them. Let's say this school had colors of blue and yellow. Well, I could go to my design number styles, come down here and change my fill to let's say a blue and you'll see it updates on every footer that I have beneath each t-shirt with the number of the design. Let's say I wanted to change my text to a color yellow. I could come down here and change that to a uniform fill and change that to a yellow. And you'll see it updates everywhere in the document. I've also got a blue t-shirts here. Let's say I wanted to change the blue t-shirts to a different color. I'll scroll up here. Let's say I wanted to change them to a gray. And it'll change the color of all those styles in the document. We've got a nice tutorial on this also on www.advancedtshirts.com. Now you can see that if you had a catalog or very intensive graphics where you're using a color or a font or something like that again and again and again and again, and you don't have to go through changing it by hand. I mean, if this was a 100-page document, I'd have to go clicking through the entire document, changing everything. I could have just changed it with a few clicks here in the object styles. Go ahead and take a look at page 7, and we want to take a look at how we've streamlined the user interface here in X6. I'm going to go ahead and select this rectangle. I'm going to come over here and go to the Object Properties Docker right here. Go ahead and click on this, and I want to expand this. Got Object Properties, yes, I'll go, here we go. Go to my Outline tool. You can see a complete change here in this interface. You can take your outline now, whereas you used to have to go to your Advanced Settings, you now have your nib and all of your settings directly available here in the docker. Same thing for fill down here. If I want to use a uniform fill, I've got that down here in all my pattern fills. Instead of having to go and click on advanced and changing things, I can get to it all here in this streamlined user interface in X6 and through these dockers. And you'll see a lot of the streamlining in some of the other dockers here available in the CorelDRAW X6 upgrade. Go ahead and take a look at page 7. Contour with rounded corners. I've been waiting for this for a number of years. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this briefly. I'm going to go ahead and select this rectangle. I'll fill this with a gray. We'll come over here to our contour docker. We'll go to, let's say, the outside, and we'll change this to about 0.24. We'll zoom in, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this. We'll click Apply. You can see we've got squared corners here. Go to my pick tool, click on rounded corners, click on apply, and you can see now we have rounded corners available in our contour. We also have bevel corners here, and we can click on apply with that, and we'll get a bevel corner. So a significant upgrade in your contour in X6, and I use this tool so much almost daily because I like to create effects with it. If I want to go, let's say, to multiple steps, and we'll make this 
0 0.09 with 28 steps. Click on apply. That's going inside. We want to go outside. Click on apply. Round our corners. Click on apply and there you can see the rounded corners with the contour. Go ahead and click on page 8 here and we'll take a look at another macro and actually that's our macro manager which is coming from X5 but it's a very powerful feature. If you're coming out of X3 or X4 you definitely want to be aware of this macro. This macro manager. We'll go to tools and we'll come down to macro and we can click on macro manager and that'll bring that up. I think I just actually closed that instead of open. I want to go here to tools, macros, and macro manager. And now if I have macros that I want to work with from my previous versions of Corel Draw, such as let's say my Fashion Factory or other Met plugins and macros from my previous versions, I can get to them and install them almost instantly here. If I come here and click on load and I'll go to my system and I want to go to my computer will go to C program files x86 we'll come down here to Corel double click here and I'll go to graphics suite x4 I'll go to draw I'll go to GMS come down here and select my fashion factory GMS right there select open that'll bring that in for me and you'll notice down here I now have my fashion factory and I can go ahead and click on the main and bring that up and open it directly in X6. Never been easier to install, work with, manage, load, and unload macros than when you're working with the macro manager. Of course, this comes from X5, but I wanted to cover it here in X6. Go ahead and close that. Go here to page nine, and we'll take a look at alignment guides because this is, to me, is a really neat little new feature, only because it's very soft. It's not quite as hard as a snap tool. I never liked working with snap tools. But I'm going to go up here and we'll go to layout. Now I want to go to view right here and then we we'll go to alignment guides. And you'll notice some very small guides that start to show up when you're moving your objects around, but yet it's much softer than working with the snapping. I never liked the snapping, but you'll see that this is snapping a little bit. And I can get this to the center here pretty quickly and center it right there and use that for alignment. Same thing with my text. If I want to come down here, and then come down here to the center and make sure I've got this aligned. I can snap it right in there and it'll be aligned. And I can go and turn that off at View and Alignment Guide. So the Corel Draw X6 upgrade, significant upgrade, lots of new tools and functionality, huge performance boost, a lot more speed, handles more complex objects, dealing with the Illustrator files that we're finding in the market that are having hundreds and thousands of objects, easy to work with in X6. And of course, we have the free getting started with the X6 upgrade series on advancedtshirts.com that covers all the new tools and functionality in X6. So you can go from X3, X4, X5 into X6 with a full understanding of how to use the application and what you're dealing with in new tools and changes since the version you were in. So go ahead and wrap here and we'll see you in our getting started with the X6 upgrade training series.